Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're making spinach, mushroom and feta spanakopitas. We start off by blanching the spinach. That is using boiling water, a teaspoon of salt and I introduce the spinach that has been roughly chopped. The spinach is 200 grams and it goes into the boiling water. This will quickly cook for about four minutes or until you see the color of the spinach start to change and become that deep um, green that we like. So then you remove it after, you drain the water off of the spinach and I actually wrung the water out of it so it was quite dry afterwards because I didn't want any of that liquid into the next step. Now for the rest of the ingredients, we have butter, some cream cheese, some crushed garlic, um, feta, chopped onion, a whole onion, 250 grams of um, mushrooms and the spinach. Lastly, the phyllo pastry. On a hot pot, I have poured two tablespoons of oil i'm using canola oil you can use any cooking oil that you prefer to that goes my whole onion that has been finely chopped i'm gonna saute that until it is translucent and ready for the next step this is where we're making our mushroom and and spinach duxel I am starting it off with the onions, they are not really necessary but I just think they make this dish taste that much better. This is 250 grams of button mushrooms that have been sliced thinly. We will just saute these along with a heaped teaspoon. Uh, a heaped spoon of garlic so that goes on the same part for a couple of minutes this will go until the mushrooms have become smaller and darker in color so we're just gonna have them go with, this, with these onions and stir them regularly so that they don't stick to the bottom my heat is quite hot but that's because I also don't want the mushrooms to cook and become you know wet as you know mushrooms become release quite a bit of water sometimes so if, me, if your heat is too low then they will start kind of boiling and I don't want that I want this to be a sauteing I am seasoning this with some salt, but not that much, just a little bit of salt. And the reason for that is we are using feta and it's quite salty, followed by about a teaspoon of black pepper. So I'm grinding that onto my pot. Cumin, a teaspoon of that. Mixed herbs, a teaspoon about of that. And lastly, garlic. Powder to supplement the fresh garlic that I added on half a teaspoon of garlic powder and then I go I'm also showing you the bottom of my pot because I just want you to see that this is not a lot of oil that I'm using in fact I think two tablespoons is um, overestimating it I used about a tablespoon of, of, of oil here yeah? The reason for that is the next steps are quite rich and I don't want them to be extra oily at the end. My blanched spinach also goes in and this is just the last mixing of the ingredients before we add the cheeses on. And again, you see the bottom of my pan, clean, no oil. If you have quite a bit of oil still, please remove it before we get on to the next step. So the spinach is already cooked. This is not really a cooking process, just mixing before we go on. Mm -hmm. 
That is Danish feta. You can use any kind of feta. I prefer this one because it's quite soft and so it disintegrates into my mixture quite well. However, I did not have quite a, um, I did not have a lot of it, so I'm gonna supplement it with some cream cheese. That's the only reason the cream cheese is here, because I don't have enough feta. I used about two tablespoons of feta, and then supplementing that with a heaped tablespoon of the cream cheese. If you have enough feta for about four tablespoons, you should go ahead and just use feta. No need for the cream cheese. So I'm just gonna mix that through quickly. My heat is off. I'm just mixing now before going on to the assembly stage of my spanakopitas. Just a bit of background, spanakopitas are Greek and they are traditionally just um, spinach and feta. However, mine is my interpretation of it. Um, so we move on to the next step. I melt some butter and I start working with my phyllo pastry. As you can see, it is store bought. Never ever making my own uh, phyllo pastry. Never ever ever. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, these are my sheets. I am laying them on to the plastic that they came with. I find it so it's so easy to work with that way. It's less messy and I am yeah, I'm just going to use it throughout. So, I'm just setting up everything. I already have my melted butter that I'm going to use and now I am using the sheets. Mostly the sheets come in like um, a square. So, you first cut um, it once in the middle to make the rectangles and we will cut it again in the middle so we'll cut the rectangle again in the middle because obviously this determines the size of the little triangles that we will make but you'll see as we go along so you take one sheet make sure it's one sheet and you sorry you just brush it with some butter so i'm brushing it with a little bit of butter i'm using my pastry brush actually i use this brush for everything it's like basting pastry everything and that is my mixture of of spinach mushroom and the feta and obviously a bit of that cream cheese that we used this is what i meant by cutting the the pastry again so just to recap we have two layers that have uh, butter in the middle that we are now wrapping around our filling so the way you do the filling is you put it on the one corner and then you start rolling like you're rolling a flag because you're trying to make triangles so we only use the little bit of water at the end because it helps us seal the pastry at the end so that it doesn't come open when we're baking or anything like that so this process goes on for quite a bit you'll see um it's quite fast actually so i'm really happy about that um you just start going and remember to always rub the pastry at the ends with some water it does make a huge difference The sheets of phyllo, phyllo pastry are really really thin so sometimes they'll tear off or something like that it really isn't a train smash because as long as the bottom layer of the of the pastry is intact you should still just go ahead because as you can see the the, the middle layer gets covered by that gets covered by the outside outside layer so it even if it, it has disintegrated or just torn quite a bit it won't affect the final look of this product and you see we rolled it so many times over itself that if 
if you had a tear in the middle at the end you wouldn't actually see it just make sure that the side that actually is outside is intact you should be fine if you're doing that so i literally am going to use i'm going to have as many pockets as it's going to take for me to finish the filling because obviously i wouldn't have anything else to use for it but um if you run out of butter just have some more and also just melt it and you move right along so you don't need to be too generous with the butter as long as the whole of the pastry is covered with it you are fine and i think it's quite an, i think i like the fact that i used two layers only because it might be two layers right now but by the time you finish rolling this you at about five or six layers you know so it's quite a lot of layers that you're gonna have of this so i think if i'd had more layers to start off with it would have been overkill and you wouldn't yeah it would be too much pastry for the amount of filling that we have in there so i think this is the sweet spot when it comes to the pastry Here's what I meant when I said it tears sometimes and we shouldn't really worry. As you've seen, my bottom layer is intact and so I am just piecing the rest of this um, together like a, I would a puzzle. In fact, it's not even that precise. It's just if I am able to find certain pieces that tear off correctly and they don't affect the bottom layer on the other end, I am just putting them on here. And I will also just, you know, top this off with butter as normal. It literally is not a big deal to me because as mentioned, we've got quite a lot of layers that go on once we have um, rolled it a couple of times and the bottom layer is intact and so it protects the filling quite well. So I will go on with this. Now for baking, I am using parchment paper and obviously cut it to size. And then I am going to use the leftover butter to line the tray. So I first line the tray with a little bit of butter. It's really not a lot. And this is more to stick the parchment paper on than anything. And as you can see, it sticks perfectly. I don't reline the parchment paper as well. I don't see the need for that. These will not stick. And I just try to find a way where they are not you know extremely close to one another that they are on top of one another but just find a way that works for me that um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use to bake these then I'm using the same bowl I'm just gonna have an egg and whisk it until it's fully combined and a little bit fluffy and then i'll use the same brush <laughs> see i told you it does everything this brush but i'm just rubbing a bit of the egg wash on top of my pastries this is what always helps you get that nice golden color with your pastries and so i just quickly do that before they go into the oven the oven is preheated at 180 degrees and it goes for as long as it takes for it to be this nice and golden brown sorry just golden it doesn't want you don't want it to be on the brown side of life spanakopitas are normally quite pale but just have a little bit of the golden tinge and i went in and actually sprinkled some sesame seeds before um, putting it in the oven earlier and that is more for the look than anything i just like the look that these speckles of the sesame seeds have and that's our final dish we are done so so simple i am pretty sure you can try this and it is divine it is absolutely worth it i'm so glad i added the mushroom which is not traditional to this recipe it made it so much tastier 
as always guys please subscribe um and turn on your notifications for my page and i'll see you next time